Hey, how you doing? Hi. Looks like we're on the move again. Not rambling. But tis the season. I watched the um, the newer Grinch. The animated one that was done by Illumination Studios two years ago. That uh, Benedict Cumberbatch voiced Mr. Grinch. It's very colorful, very dazzling. Never saw Whoville that way. I mean, the animation was incredible. Tremendous. Put a lot of effort into that. I mean, I don't know how you compare it to the, to the other ones. The, the original, the short one, has its charm, and it's kind of to the point, and it's very short. The original Grinch was only about, like, 23 minutes long? I don't know if you realize that. It is short. And, of course, the one with Jim Carrey, it's a full-length movie, which has great effects, too, and incredible makeup. I know that Jim had struggles, uh, with the makeup because it's confining especially the contacts it's painful it's actually painful and he was about to quit just because of the pain he couldn't take it but i think um producer brian grazer hooked him up with some i think it was a navy seal someone that uh helped him to understand how to fight through pain gave him some techniques and obviously the rest his history because Jim went on to do the role and I think it still remains his highest grossing movie and Ron Howard's highest grossing fun little Christmas flick but I, I kind of wonder and I never really looked this up but that I wonder if Grinch is an updated version of A Christmas Carol because Ebenezer Scrooge and the Grinch are so similar both of them don't like Christmas and by the end of the story, both of them do. Now, in Ebenezer's case, he just doesn't want to participate. He just wants to bah humbug everything and cut himself off from everybody, hoard everything for himself. That, that last part is kind of similar to the Grinch. I mean, the Grinch wants to sabotage Christmas. He wants to take it away from people. I don't think he really wanted to hoard anything. He was ready to throw all their toys and gifts and, and trees uh, off that cliff. Until, obviously, his heart grew three sizes bigger. Because he saw that even without their toys and gifts and Christmas trees and decorations, they still had the Christmas spirit. Ebenezer just had to see his past, his present and future to realize this is not the way to live. What's my end game here, right? That, I mean, but both of them are the same character arc. They start off really hating the holiday and by the end of it they love it and want to participate and help spread the cheer. Their hearts grew, both of their hearts grew. The Grinch was more about seeing how people could still enjoy the holiday without the stuff. Come together in love and peace. And Ebenezer had to see it was more a battle within to get outside himself and see how the world was uh, affected by his decisions or how he and his decisions affected others. How he lost the love of his life and just to see what was going to happen with him when he died. People were going to be like, eh, good, he's gone. That makes me wonder, is it something that you have to look, look at yourself? And it's a big topic the legacy you want to leave behind. But obviously, if Ebenezer had stayed the way he was, there'd be no story. Same with the Grinch. Why make the story? I mean, that's one of the things of storytelling. You gotta have 
a journey that ideally ends in some kind of climax and then an epilogue if needs to be. Because then you won't have a story. <laughs> it's pointless. You can have an idea, but you just gotta know how to tell it. And then Charles Dickens I guess, really knew what he was doing there. I mean, that's like... If he was still alive, just imagine how much uh, royalties he'd get from that. Because that's been made into movies dozens of times. I just saw the one with Patrick Stewart playing Ebenezer Scrooge. Counselor, go to the holodeck and get me some Earl Grey tea. He was good. Great actor. This is the season, I guess. For those kinds of stories. It's to remind us, right? That it's within. But uh, it really... I mean, if that, is that a life lesson that J Dickens was trying to get there? Sometimes you gotta reflect on your past and your present and your future to see what kind of legacy you're gonna leave behind. That's a pretty big moral. You know, a lot of things tell you to stay in the present, but the past can leave clues behind. And if you're really hopeless for the future, you have to rechange. We think it, right? Especially this time of year. It baffles me that a lot of people are filing divorces and evictions, domestic violence injunctions this time of year. Hey, it's Christmas week. Take a break. Come on. I know there was a another movie called Joyo Noel. I could be saying it wrong, but I think the premise was people are I forgot what country. It might have been France or some other country we were having a, a war with each other. But they took a break on Christmas. Because it was Christmas. And I actually think they enjoyed each other's company. But then the day after they went right back at fighting each other. It's like, come on, guys. Hey, if we could get along for one day, let's try this out for another and another. And you maybe say, hey, you know... What were we fighting for in the first place? I don't remember. Okay, let's have a spot of tea and chill. And some crumpets. It's that time of year, right? So... It's stuff that's making me move and groove and shake and bake and candlestick make, baby. Maybe it's cold outside. It's just a little breezy. But thanks for joining me on this little stroll. As always, click like, like what you see, subscribe to me, and we'll chat some more whenever. I'm in the mood to be on the move with you. See you soon. Have a holly jolly day.